Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sean and in today's video, I'll be giving you my top tips to score high in the BMAT exam. The BMAT exam is an exam required by certain medical schools in the UK, which you have to sit in order to apply there. But before we get started, today's video is very kindly sponsored by MedMentor. MedMentor is a completely free online platform designed by ambitious and successful medical students. They provide a huge number of free resources for any potential medical applicants. These include things like BMAT and UCAT guides, blog posts by medical students, and advertised lists of upcoming events for things like interview workshops and virtual work experience. I really recommend checking them out, it's completely free so you've got nothing to lose. Now on with the video. Firstly, I'll be briefly talking about how the exam actually works. The BMAT is split into three sections. Section 1 which tests you on critical thinking and problem solving, Section 2 which tests you on biology, chemistry, maths and physics, and Section 3 which is an essay where you discuss an ethical question. Section 1 and 2 are both multiple choice and scored from a scale of 1 to 9. And Section 3 is scored in two parts. One is a number from 1 to 5 which determines the quality of your essay, and the other part is a letter from A to E which is a score you get for your correct use of English and grammar. So a bit of context about me, I sat the exam on the 4th of November in 2020 and my score across the three sections was 7.3, 6.6 and 3A which I'm very proud of and I think some of the tips that I'll be telling you in this video will hopefully also help you score very high in this exam. So how did I prepare for this? Well I would say the key thing for BMAT preparation is to stay organised. This is because the BMAT is normally sat in November, um, it can be sat in early September as well but in my year that was not an option. And because this exam is, is in November, unlike the UCAT where you normally sit it in your summer holidays, in the time around the exam, there is a lot going on as a medical applicant. You've got your UCAS deadline around October 15th, where you have to send off all your, your application. You might be still writing your personal statement. Um, I had some mock exams I had to do. You might be starting year 13 A2 content. Uh, generally, it's quite a busy time and to throw in a whole exam in there, it's really important you stay organised. I decided to do this by creating an Excel sheet where I wrote down all the dates for about a month before the exam and then put in the revision and the scores I was getting to keep track of my progress and to ensure that I was on track to do well. I prepared for just over a month, I started in October and the exam was in November. Looking at the Excel spreadsheet I did, I would record the mark I was getting in the exam set and most importantly in the comments section of the table, I would write in the topics which I thought I was struggling with a lot. So you can see here, I put the menstrual cycle resistance in waves which I was struggling with around the 3rd of October. And that way, whenever I was faced with a topic that I hadn't really looked at, I would know that I need to go over that in the future and I can prioritise that. I also tried to colour code it with red being things I literally had no idea about and black being things that I just needed to just um, be aware of. It is quite messy but the important thing is that you're keeping track of your revision. It doesn't have to be super neat, I'm not an expert at using Excel so this was the best I could do. Just by staying on track of it, you're going to be ahead of everyone else. The main resource that I used to repair was this website called BMAT Ninja and BMAT Ninja was actually a paid resource but what I liked about it was before I paid for it, there's actually a free version which you are able to use. Granted the free version doesn't have a lot, there is still some really good stuff there. Um, BMAT Ninja, the website is split into three sections. Section one is it's called the Training Temple. Essentially it gives you walkthrough guides for each of the section with some exam technique that will hopefully help you do well. The second part of the website is called the Practice Dojo where you can practice questions. What I really liked about this was that they didn't go into the recent practice papers so that when you came to sit the recent exams you're not faced with questions which you've already done before in the practice setting. And the third section was the exam arena. You can access most of the questions for free since they are publicly available anyway, but if you pay £29, you can upgrade an individual section. If you upgrade the training temple, you get access to the four guides. If you upgrade the practice dojo, you'll also get access to work solutions which are written so that if you do get stuck, you can look at them. And if you upgrade the exam arena, then you get access to the four work solutions for the exams. I decided to upgrade it all because I really wanted to give myself the best possible shot of doing well um, and it did cost £75 which was really expensive but the way I saw it, it was like an investment in my future so I decided to just splash the cash on this um, since it was like an educational purpose. That being said, they do provide bursaries if you are low income so definitely look into that, it's a really good option. In my personal experience I found that some of the guides in the training temple were very useful, especially the section 1 guides. I also quite liked having the work solution in the training temple and the exam arena so overall I was quite happy with the £75 that I spent. That being said there are a few issues of the site that I think you should just be aware of. For example when you're doing the questions for some reason the software only limits you to 5 
multiple choice options but in the actual exam there are some questions which might have like eight or ten multiple choice examples having it just limited to five it makes it slightly easier than what you get in the real thing so that's just something to be aware of i would not recommend doing the practice exams on their actual system because for some reason they just missed out a bunch of questions for some of them which is really really annoying because there's like no reason why they would have missed them out um, I just think if you're paying £75, they should all be there. They are publicly available tests anyway, so I would just go on the official BMAT website and download the actual practice paper and then use some of the work solutions, but not all the work solutions were available anyway. While this did cost a lot of money, this was the only thing I used. There are definitely some really good free resources that you can use to help you prepare for the BMAT out there. And a great example of a free resource is today's sponsor, Med Mentor. On their website, you can access the Superhub, which is a whole page dedicated to amazing free resources that any medical applicant would need, including amazing BMAT advice. And they've got some great free BMAT practice questions available, example essays, links to free question banks, a BMAT ebook. And I really love how all the resources on their website are all really high quality, and most of them are completely free. So definitely check that out if that's something you're interested in. Now I'll be giving you my advice about how to ace section one. Section one is 60 minutes, and in that time you have 32 questions. It consists of critical thinking, as well as problem solving questions. I'll first start off by talking about the critical thinking. So 16 questions will be critical thinking and there are normally around 7 types of critical thinking questions you'll be faced with. I would say that you should probably leave about 1 minute per critical thinking question because this leaves you a bit of extra time to focus on the problem solving sections afterwards. Critical thinking is one of the BMAT parts which I would say is the easiest to prepare for just because the questions that you're faced with in the exam are very similar to what you can practice. It's very easy to apply the same technique on all the questions and really you should try and aim to get as many of these questions as right as possible because they are low hanging fruit. I personally really like the BMAT Ninja Guide for section one. I thought they had some really good techniques in there, which I thought helped a lot. I also am planning on making a future video dedicated purely to section one, which will hopefully help you with some of those techniques. One of the main tips I have for section one is to, to read the question, then look at the passage and decide what best fits the answer to the question before even looking at the options. And then once you've decided what you think the answer is, look at the answers and see if your one is there. I would recommend this over looking at the answers first and seeing one which you think matches best because it's very easy in critical thinking to convince yourself that one of the answers in the options is the actual right one when it actually might be wrong. By thinking what it is yourself and double checking in the, in the multiple choice options, you can guarantee that if they align then it's probably correct. Normally for critical thinking there's always a key buzzword in the question which will help you decide how you're going to answer that. So always look for that as the first thing you do when you look at the question. For example, this might be um, identify the conclusion and in that question, conclusion is the key word that you should look for and you can use that to hopefully answer the question best. If you're struggling to find questions to practice, I would also recommend having a look at some of the other admissions tests. For example, the TSA also includes critical thinking and problem solving, so some of the questions in there are very, very much similar to the BMAT. So you can always have a look at some other admissions tests and hopefully use the, those resources to help revise as well. Now for problem solving in section one. This is very, very similar to the UCAT's decision making in my opinion. Ideally, you wanna spend around two minutes per question. It's very easy in problem solving to spend longer than two minutes on a question. But if you find yourself going over that time, I would recommend giving it your best guess, moving on to the next question and coming back at the end if you have time. My biggest tip for this is to use the scrap paper available to you and try and make a diagram or write down things where possible. Uh, you're often faced with things like dice questions. For those, I would always draw like a 2D net of a dice and label it with what was relevant and I thought that really helped me visualise what the dice would look like in different positions. So I would recommend using your scrap paper as much as you can. For problem solving, practice really does make perfect. The questions are very difficult at first but the more you practice, the more you're going to get used to that type of question and you'll probably be faced with some of the questions which are quite, quite similar in your actual exam. Moving on to section two, um, section two covers maths and the three main sciences. Now they say that BMAT section two is GCSE science, which when I first heard that I was like, that's pretty good. I got nines in GCSE science, so I should be fine. That is not the case. These are, these questions are technically covering content that would be in the GCSE, but it's a lot harder. Like the questions they're asking are very, very difficult. And what makes section two particularly hard is the added time pressure. You have 30 minutes to do around 27 questions. Now that means you only have about one minute per question. And when you're doing long complex calculations, you have to be very fast, especially since you don't even have a calculator in the exam. 
my top tips would be to use the free online section two guide made by the BMAP people themselves. This is literally a whole revision guide which walks you through everything you need to know for section two. It's an amazing resource, definitely use that and it's completely free so why would you not use it? It's made by the people and it's literally got everything you would need to know in it. I'd also recommend using the BMAT specification. I didn't do this until the last minute but I wish I did it sooner because it was actually very useful. What I would recommend doing is um, printing out the BMAT specification and going through point by point. Likelihood is you'll probably know the majority of it because you are doing science A levels. I didn't do physics but I did biology and chemistry which helped a lot. So for those I was able to take the majority of stuff off and I highlighted the parts that I wasn't so sure of or didn't really know or it's been a long time since I even looked at that. Another tool I used was my old GCSE revision guides and practice books. Um, these were just CGP guides. I didn't use these a lot because I actually found that the free online guide was pretty much just as good but there were some questions in them which I would sometimes refer to and if there was a particularly hard topic they were also a good source of knowledge. I'd also frequently watch YouTube videos especially by the channel Free Science Lessons. I used him in my GCSEs and since this was covering GCSE content I used him again. Very much recommend they're very concise and pretty much cover what you need to know for the BMAT. I'd also recommend this masterclass course by Ali Abdal. Now this course is like £99, it's like an online course, video tutorials for each section of the BMAT and £99 is a lot of money to be paying for just some videos um, but fortunately he does provide a few number of them f completely for free but you have to do it on the actual website so it's not on YouTube it's on the course's website which I'll leave a link to in the description. I found that um, for certain topics, especially in physics, he explained it really well. The vast majority of videos on that website do cost money, but the free videos um, are worth having a look at because I found that they were really good explanations. It's really important when revising for section 2 to always focus on your most weak areas and for me this was the physics section. And I hadn't done physics since GCSE so coming back to it I had pretty much forgotten the vast majority of what I had learned. I spent a lot of time going over my GCSE physics and trying to get back to the skill that I was when I sat my GCSEs. I think if you do A-level physics you'll, you'll probably have a good advantage in section 2. But if you don't do A-level physics, biology, chemistry or maths, one of those subjects, you might need a bit longer so for me I need a bit longer for the physics but if you didn't do maths for example or you didn't do biology then you might need a bit longer to just go over that. I'd also really recommend creating a formula document. For physics there was a lot of formula that you needed to know um, so I just created a list and had that by me while I was answering questions and what I found was that as I was doing questions those formulas kind of naturally just came committed to memory just because I was using them so often that I wouldn't stress about the formula just have like a little cheat sheet by your set by your side so you can refer to that when doing questions um, and then maybe like a week before your exam just take that away and you'll probably find that you know the vast majority of them all off by heart and really importantly focus on your time for section two if if you're doing a question it's going to take longer than a minute you're looking at a question and it's a math question and it's got a lot of different steps that you know how to do it but to do it without a calculator is definitely going to take you longer than a minute skip it give it your best guess and move on to the next question because it is not worth your time to leave questions at the end which you might be able to do Ideally you want to finish all the questions and any spare time go back on the ones which you can solve but would take longer. You don't have a calculator, a time management tip I would use is do your best estimates. A lot of the time there are some answers that are fairly close together but if you're aware that your estimate might be an underestimate or an overestimate then you can normally make a pretty good guess and really help increase your chances of getting that question right um, and save time on the way because realistically you're not going to be able to get every question in section 2 right. That's just the fact there's not enough time to be able to do that. So what you need to do is use these time saving techniques and risk maybe not being 100% sure but being that 80% sure that you've got it right by using estimates as best as you can. Now for section 3 the essay. In section 3 you have a choice of three questions and they're all normally some ethical kind of question. There is usually one which is uh, philosophical, not related to medicine in any way, shape or form. There is one which is kind of scientific but not medicine related um, and there it will be one that is very much medicine related. And for me, I always just stuck to the medicine related ones because I was applying for medicine, so it made sense to do that. And I felt that I had already, I already had a kind of good grasp about medical ethics by that point. So it made sense to just kind of focus on those. Genuinely though, it really doesn't make any difference what question you pick. 
pick the question which you know that you'll be able to answer the best and you think you have the best points to give rather than maybe choosing the philosophical question because you think that less people are going to choose that so it'll make you stand out they don't care which question you pick pick the one which you will answer the best you also get just one page of a4 the year i said it, it was on a computer so like the limit was like 500 words or so so that wasn't really much of a limit and that definitely would be more than a page so the year i said i was quite fortunate that i wasn't limited by the amount of space but what you will find is that one page of a4 is genuinely not a lot to write all the points that you would be able to make so rather than this section being time pressured it's actually quite chill the important thing is plan your argument first on spare paper and before you write it on the actual thing know exactly what you're going to say and how you're going to make your argument cohesive but convincing format that i would use to answer these would be an introduction a for against and a conclusion if you do that you'll be able to get a, um, a three but well, i think universities tend to look more at section one and two don't quote me on that but Section three is not something that I would recommend spending a huge amount of time on unless you know that essay writing is something you struggle with or perhaps English isn't your first language then yeah you might need to spend a bit longer but for me I did maybe like three or four exam practice essays and maybe like one or two plans on top of that as long as you've got 2.5b or above I would say you're fine like I feel like most unis don't care if it's like 3a or 3.5a like, I think the focus generally is more on section one and two but that probably does vary between unis my advice is to try and keep up to date with your news and current affairs I probably wouldn't go out of my way um like writing notes about like the news and stuff but Genuinely, it's a good habit to just keep track of the news anyway. And just having that breadth of knowledge will probably help you answer these questions a bit better. Um, it might be useful to look over the pillars of medical ethics, as that can be something you might want to refer to, especially if you're planning on doing the medicine question. Also, make sure you put examples with your point. These examples don't have to be real life examples. I mean, you're probably going to score higher if they are in a real life example, but I didn't really come up with any real life examples. I just kind of made them up. So I would be like, say if it's talking about if confidentiality should be breached, you could say in the 1993 case of blah, 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 confidentiality was breached. Um, you can do that and you'd probably score quite high if you do that. But what you can do is just say an example of when confidentiality could be breached would be a doctor accidentally leaves patient details lying around. And that's an example of how confidentiality could be breached. Like it doesn't have to be an actual real life example. The really important thing is just to have an example in the first place. I would really recommend spending around 10 minutes planning and 20 minutes writing but um, definitely do a few practice essays just to, to nail down your timing and know how long you need to be spending on it. Section 3 is not one you need to stress about. Do a bit of practice but your main focus generally should be on section 1 and 2. Section 3 you can prepare for, you can try your best but it's not hard to do well enough is what I would say, whereas section one and two, unless you prepare a lot, it's very hard to do well. So my final take home points, which I think everyone sitting the BMAT needs to know. First of all, try and leave at least one month to prepare. Obviously it depends on your schedule. If perhaps you're on like a gap year and you're gonna be revising full time, then you might need a bit less. But for me, it was about one month. The first three weeks were during school. So it was a bit inconsistent, an hour here, an hour there. Um, but the last week and a half was basically full time purely revising for the BMAP. So I would say that the more time you leave, the better prepared you will be. For section one and two, do not be scared to guess, skip and move on if you're feeling that you're going over time. It's much better to at least have a go at all the questions than have maybe some questions at the end which you don't get a chance to look at, especially because those questions at the end could be ones that you could answer in 30 seconds or so. So if you don't even give yourself the chance to answer them, you're really putting yourself at a disadvantage. So be strict with yourself, be disciplined. Even if you think that, oh, it's just 30 seconds and I'll get there. Honestly, it's probably best to give your best guess and then come back to it when you know you're gonna have a bit of extra time. Finally, as with any exam, it's important to focus on your weakest areas the most. That's how you make the biggest improvement. For me, my weakest area was definitely physics. And I felt that by the end of my revision, physics was one of the more stronger points. Um, in my BMAT exam. But that pretty much sums up everything. Again, make sure you check out MedMentor for some amazing free resources. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, put them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed. I've got all sorts of medical advice videos coming up, including specific guides for section one and section two, and maybe section three. So make sure you're subscribed so you do not miss that. Hopefully this was useful. If you've got any tips that you'd like to share, put them in the comments and I'm sure people would benefit from them. But thank you so much for getting to this point in the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. Bye.